in a sense, there's a great deal of material coming, but in another sense, it's stuff that we sort of usually cover quickly, even though it's important. Um, so this stuff we're going to cover now, we're going back to fixed points. This stuff generalizes into higher dimensions, but that's just work in the Cartesian plane, at least for now. So we have variables X and Y. And let's say we have two differential equations, one for X and one for Y. And these differential equations are autonomous. We defined autonomous, but that was long ago. What we mean by autonomous is that the variable with T isn't explicitly appearing in any of the right hand function. So something like dx dt equals the sine of x plus y dy dt equals x minus y. This is autonomous. If we made dy dt be x minus y plus t, it's no longer autonomous because the variable t is appearing in the functions, in the expressions. Going back to a previous definition, although we were just working on the line at the time, a fixed point is a point x star y star such that both of these derivatives are zero at that point. If we stick this point into the x derivative, we get zero. And if we stick this point into the y derivative, we get zero. So fixed points stay, I mean, if we started at x, x star comma y star, we'd stay there forever. We're not moving vertically and we're not moving horizontally. So we're not moving. In the real world, we talked about this. I mean, it was, what was it? Section 2.1 maybe, but we addressed the idea that, okay, your model might say you just remain at the fixed point forever, but any real world situation is going to have random perturbations and the like that are going to move you around in ways that the differential equations aren't accounting for. And what happens if you start at the fixed point and then get moved off of it? That is the stability of 
the fenced point. And the the uh, the possibilities are at least in the simple cases we're looking at, a fixed point can be asymptotically stable. So if we get kicked off the fixed point, we just converge right back to it. Nearby values converge to the fixed point. Then in the uh, in the two to, in the one dimensional case on the line, our options were basically asymptotically stable or unstable. On the plane, we'll have neutral stability. And a fixed point is neutrally stable if nearby values remain nearby, but don't converge. We didn't really have this on the line, on the plane, it's the easiest thing in the world to have. You have a fixed point and this fixed point is like the sun in our solar system. Trajectories are orbiting the fixed point. So if we start near the fixed point, we remain kind of near the fixed point but we're not converging towards the fixed point. And then, um, unstable. I'm going to state this a little informally. Almost all values move away from the point. If you compare this to what we did when we were looking at just the line, we don't have any notion of semi-stability here. On the line, a fixed point could be semi-stable, and I mean, that was a type of instability, but it was a special type of instability where half of the line could still converge towards the fixed point. Um, we don't have any notion like that in two-dimensional space or higher. And any questions I ought to ask? For reasons that are going to become apparent, 
hopefully by Thursday, we're really interested in looking at these linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients, not for their own sake, per se, but because we're going to see Thursday that they're a powerful tool for studying other types of differential equations. And in particular, we're very interested in the fixed point that every single one of these linear differential equations has at the origin. Um, the origin is always a fixed point because the matrix A times zero is always zero. So the derivative at the origin is always zero. And we are going to basically just go through a checklist. It's kind of a lot because there are these terms that you have to memorize, but the stability and type of this fixed point. And we'll get to what I mean by type in a second. The stability and type of these fixed points are controlled entirely by the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix A. If you just find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you know whether this fixed point is stable or unstable or whatever it is. And you know the type of the fixed point. And this is the second time I've used the word type. It's not really a formal mathematical phrase. Like, I don't know if your textbook will talk about the type of a fixed point, but you can have, for example, two asymptotically stable fixed points where the trajectories behave very differently. You can have one asymptotically stable fixed point where nearby conditions just go directly to the fixed point. Or you can have an asymptotically stable fixed point where nearby trajectories Converge to the fixed point like water going down a drain. And even though the fixed point is asymptotically stable in both these cases, we want to be able to draw a distinction between them. We want to say, well, these fixed points are acting differently, even though they're both asymptotically stable. And I'm going to say right up front, the terminology I am going to teach you is the standard terminology. Yeah. And I mean, that might seem like it should go without saying, but Somehow there are online resources that use different phrases to mean different things. And like if you're going online for help or whatever, that can be obviously unfortunate. Um, 
the terminology we're going to learn in this class is the standard terminology. So, we're looking, remember, at x prime equals ax, and we're looking at the fixed point at the origin, zero comma zero. And the first case we're going to look at is A has two real eigenvalues with the same sign, by which I mean the eigenvalues are either both positive or both negative. So if we're in this case, we've got our fixed point at the origin, zero comma zero, and the trajectories are going to look basically like parabolas. So we're going to have trajectories that look like this. And the fixed point is either going to be unstable or asymptotically stable. And let me get, first let's get the terminology now. In terms of type, we call a fixed point, like we call this fixed point a node. And it's asymptotically stable if the eigenvalues are negative. If the eigenvalues are negative, then these parabola S trajectories are all going inwards. And if we start out here, let's say, you'll go into the origin along a parabolic curve. The fixed point is unstable if the eigenvalues are positive. If the eigenvalues are positive, let's see if I can just erase these arrows. Then these are the trajectories, but we move away from the fixed point along these trajectories. So if we start here, let's say, sort of got off it. If we start here, let's say, we move along the trajectory, but we move away from the fixed point. And all of our cases are going to look something like this, where something, usually an eigenvalue, but something is going to be positive or negative, and the fixed point's going to be unstable if it's 
um, positive and asymptotically stable if it's negative. So this is a very, uh, this is a sort of case that's going to be very familiar to us by the end of this lecture. Here's a fixed point that's always negative. It's the exception to that case. It's one of only two types of fixed points whose stability is always the same, whose stability um, never changes. In this case, it's an unstable fixed point. And the case we're looking at is that there are two eigenvalues, but one of them is positive and the other is negative. Or if you're generalizing this to three-dimensional or higher space. There are some positive eigenvalues and there are some negative eigenvalues. In this case, the origin zero, zero is unstable. And the word we use, our classification word, is that the origin is a saddle. Let me draw a picture for you. Here's the origin. There are two eigenvectors. Right? Well, I, it's so hard to say. Obvi there are infinitely many eigenvectors, but every eigenvalue just has one linearly independent eigenvector. So here, let's say that's an eigenvector. Then every other eigenvector is just a constant multiple of it. Let me get rid of that arrow at the end. If I don't know why Zoom sometimes does this, but if I stop that share and then get the whiteboard back, that will fix the problem I was having. So let's say that this is an eigenvector. I'll forego the arrow you traditionally write at the end of it. Then every constant multiple of that eigenvector is an eigenvector. And constant multiples of vectors correspond to lines. If we take every constant multiple of that vector, we get a line through the origin. And then we have another eigenvector, let's say there. And every constant multiple of this eigenvector is an eigenvector so do this as neatly as I can, but there are the eigenvectors. And one of these eigenvectors corresponds to a positive eigenvalue. The other corresponds to a negative eigenvalue. 
Um, let's say this corresponds to a positive eigenvector. If we start on the eigenvector, we stay on the eigenvector. That's a fact that I'm going to state without proof for time reasons. And if the eigenvalue is positive, we are moving away from the origin. So if we start on this eigenvector, we stay on it but we move away from the origin. Now this other eigenvector corresponds to the negative eigenvalue. And if we start on it, we stay on it. And if we start on it, we converge towards the origin. This, by the way, in this case we're looking at, x prime equals a x two-dimensional space. This is the only way anything can ever converge to an unstable fixed point. The fixed point I've said is unstable, but if we start on that eigenvector, we converge towards it. So it might seem like I'm contradicting myself because I said we don't have a notion of semi-stability in two-dimensional space, but two things, one, in a, any line, in a formal sense, has an area of zero. And if you select an initial condition at random, you are on that line with a probability of zero. So it's very different from the semi-stable case where half of the line are uh, converge to the fixed point, and you could converge to the fixed point with a probability of one half. It's here you converge to the fixed point with a probability of zero. Second, I mean, this is a purely mathematical statement, but just like I've said that random perturbations will take you off of fixed points, random perturbations will take you off of eigenvectors in the real world. So what about trajectories that aren't on one of the eigenvectors? What if we start here? Well, we're starting kind of near this eigenvector. So we're going to initially be swept along kind of towards the origin. We'll be swept along in the same direction that that eigenvector is going, but we're being swept towards that eigenvector there. And as we approach this eigenvector, we'll then be swept in the direction that this eigenvector is pointing. And the trajectory will end up doing something like that. Similarly, if we start here, let's say, we'll go kind of towards the origin initially, but once we get close to the other eigenvector, we'll be swept away from the origin. So, our trajectories end up looking something like this. And someone felt long ago that this looks like a saddle, hence the name saddle fixed. 
point. I guess I kind of see it. Proper and improper nodes. I hate this terminology because if you talk about a node and then you talk about a proper and improper node, it sounds like you're classifying the node. You start with a node and it's either proper or it's improper. And that's not what's happening here. A proper node is not a node. An improper node is not a node. There are different types of fixed points. It's a very awkward naming convention. A proper node. is one eigenvalue, but two eigenvectors. And um, as a matter of fact, in the two-dimensional space, if we have two Linearly independent eigenvectors, it turns out that every vector is an eigenvector. And if you look at what happens here, if we start on an eigenvector, we either go straight towards the origin or straight away from the origin, depending on whether the eigenvalue is negative or positive. So if we have a proper node, then either every initial condition goes directly towards it, or every initial condition goes directly away from it. And just as with, um, with nodes, it's the sign of the eigenvalue that controls this. If the eigenvalue is positive, The node is unstable if the eigenvalue is negative. The node is asymptotically stable. A question so far, kind of rushing this, uh, just because we have two cases left, and it's not, I mean, I don't know how I would spend longer on this, really. I guess I could do concrete examples. Here's A, here's what the um, fixed point is. But let me, for now, let me just get the cases all on the whiteboard. We can do more examples on uh, Thursday. Improper nodes. One eigenvalue. One eigenvector. Improper nodes have kind of a weird shape. So we have the fixed point, 
then we have the single eigenvector. And let's look at the case where the eigenvector is negative. So let's say we start here. What's going to happen is that we're going to be swept along down the board in the same direction that this eigenvector is going. So we're going to be swept along. We're going to overshoot the fixed point, but then we're going to be in the domain of this. Here, we're pointing towards the fixed point. So we overshoot the fixed point, but then we turn around and converge back to the fixed point. So we get trajectories like this. And this is asymptotically stable. Um, if lambda is positive, this is kind of a recurring theme. If lambda is positive, our trajectories are going to look exactly the same. It's just that we're going to go along them in the different in the opposite direction. So we still have trajectories that look like this. But we go in the opposite direction along those trajectories, which is exactly what we saw with proper nodes and exactly what we saw with nodes. The trajectories don't change with lambda. The only thing that changes is which direction you're moving on those trajectories. Yes. You'll bear with me while I go like two minutes over. If lambda is complex, then lambda, there are two complex lambdas a plus bi and a minus bi. And it's the a that's going to control everything here. And your cases are a center. This happens when a equals zero, and this is the case I drew on the board earlier, where trajectories are orbiting around the fixed point. This is also the only case, or at least the only case we're looking at, where the fixed point is neutrally stable. Every other case, it's either unstable or asymptotically stable. So if A is anything else, we get a spiral. And maybe you can guess the pattern by now. If this A is negative, then trajectories starting near the fixed point 
spiral in towards the fixed point. And the fixed point is asymptotically stable. If A is positive, then trajectories starting near the fixed point spiral away from the fixed point. And this is unstable. Um, strictly speaking, I guess there are kind of aberrant cases we haven't looked at. The most significant case we haven't looked at, we haven't looked at any case where the, an eigenvalue is zero. They've been positive or they've been negative. And we'll see Thursday that the major application of this stuff doesn't work if any of the eigenvalues are zero. And that's why we haven't bothered considering those cases. I will see you Thursday. And I'll get probably.